page 74, which is where chapter two starts. Uh, there's some background earlier in the PDF about how you travel through space and you know the FTL process because unless you're a generational ship or something, uh, you know you're you're going to want to go faster than light so you can get places right. Either you know it's either going to be on the ship like a warp drive uh, or hyperdrive, or, or you're going to need a Stargate or some kind of e drives that you use to to get through. Whatever super science is required to make yourself get from point A to point B is the speed of plot, as uh, J. Michael Straczynski used to say. You get there when you get there. And sometimes you have some interesting things happen along the way, but you fly at the speed of plot, and sometimes uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find some interesting things along the way. All right, so prep is play. So they say it's designed for jump-in gameplay. We're playing solo, teaming up with other players for co-op campaign. Uh, preparing for liftoff. Uh, safety tools are great. Um, I can't, you know, I'm not going to do things like, um, I don't like torture. So uh, I'm going to tell you up front right now, I'm not a fan of torture. I'm not a fan of uh, being overtly sexual in my games. Uh, you know, the idea would be to do it tastefully. So, you know, when you might watch a movie and, you know, the Two people go into a room and the door shuts and then it, you know, like the camera kind of passes over one side and fades to black. And then next scene, they wake up the next day and they're all either fully clothed in bed or they're covered up tastefully with a sheet. Uh, that's that's the way I go. If you don't like that, maybe you should find another stream. Probably not any kind of, you know, um, assault or um, a bodily harm of a sexual nature. Content warning. Apologies. But um, there may be some language. Uh, I, I think in the future, we're not going to be overly worried about, you know, whether or not people say fuck or shit or, you know, asshole. Uh, this is probably PG-13 in that case, depending on how Disney you are. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you do have some issues with that, I'll try to remember to put content warnings at the beginning of the videos to uh, remind people of that and also in the descriptions in the uh, YouTube channels. So... So the truth workbook is right here. And so I'm going to step away from the PDF. Um, the one thing I don't want to do is get in trouble with the creators of the game uh, as, as oversharing too much uh, with regard to that. Even though you can get a lot of the content uh, on their website, I, I don't want to give away everything in the book. You, if you really want the book, you should go buy it um, because it's, it's an excellent book. So, uh, keeping it moving. When looking at options, read the bolded text as a quick summary of your choices. The details and quest starters are there for inspiration after you make a pick. If a particular category isn't relevant for your evolving setting or doesn't interest you right now, ignore it and move on. Yes! Uh, you can come back to this exercise later to make a decision for a truth when you encounter the at aspect in play. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe something else comes along. Um, I fully expect uh, the Forge to have possibilities to upgrade technologies. Uh, you know, uh, I was thinking transhumanist elements, that kind of thing. You know, genetic modification. Uh, I don't expect there, you know, I don't expect there to be, um, you know, people with disabilities who can't do anything. You know, there, there's technology there. I do... I, I do hope that there is some kind of level of technology where everybody can can do whatever it is they want to do or um, outfit their UI and however they feel like when they're flying their ship, whether it be brain interface or whether it be there's exoskeletons that allow people to do whatever they want to do or, you know, be in chairs. There's no, I, I would, you know, so we'll get to that. Um, you know, things like anti-grav, I'm, I'm probably going to veto, but there's definitely ways of, allowing everyone to have, you know, live in the forge uh, and, and achieve their ultimate potential. The cataclysm. So there's, they pick three here. Now, obviously, custom truths and notes, maybe the cataclysm didn't happen this way. Maybe, you know, you have a different thought on how this works. So uh, there's a 1 to 33 chance there's a plague that extinguished the stars in our home galaxy, bad intermittent, Interdimensional entities invaded our reality, so I'm imagining, 
you know, species 8472 or the Borg or maybe Q, somebody like that. Uh, we escape the ravages of catastrophic war. That sounds good too. I mean, there's, you know, any one of these are good, but you can also pick your own if you don't want to do that. So, you know, like if you were following kind of how terracide works, somebody blew up the earth. We don't know what happened. Maybe they made way for an intergalactic uh, interstate or something like that. Uh, and, you know, you just, you know, we're lucky enough to bring your towel. So uh, let me grab my dice. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to, so we'll have to roll D100 twice, depending on what the answer is here. Um, oh, and I'm, I'm not overly religious, so... Yeah, the religious stuff may may go by the wayside. Um, there's definitely an option in here for like you know you've left religion at home. Um, we'll see what happens there. Um, I I do believe people will still embrace some kind of religious aspect in the future. It's just you know we'll see. All right, so that's a ten. That is a ten. So a ten. There is a sun plague that extinguished the stars in our home galaxy. Ooh, that's going to be rough. All right, so the additional, so we suspect the sun plague. Okay, so suspect. So that this is a way this could have happened, but maybe didn't. So we're going to give this a shot here. All right, 45. 45 is a sudden dark matter decay. It's very Trekno babble, right? It's like, uh, you know, your dilithium crystal chamber fracture or you know, dark matter decay or uh, something like that. All right, so we, we acknowledge that there's a sun plague. Uh, and so the anomaly traveled at incredible speeds, many times faster than light itself, and snuffed out the stars around us before we realized it was coming. Few of us survived as we made our way to this new galaxy. Here in the forge, the stars are still aflame. We cling to their warmth like weary travelers huddled around a fire. Okay, um, so they suspect that the sun plague was caused by a sudden dark matter decay. Now, um, let me see, can you fill this in? Nope, okay, so what I'm going to do is I have a VS Code uh, text sheet here that I'm going to fill in. Um, I will share this at some point online so that we can have our notes. The sun plague extinguished the stars in the galaxy. Maybe it didn't completely get rid of all of them. But we have our... I have a VS code up here that I'm going to put down sun plague and uh, dark matter decay is to blame. Okay. And so... Does that mean all the stars are gone or just very diminished? I mean, this brings up questions of was the soul system targeted? Uh, was there a reason why the, 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 the stars went? Did the stars go nova? How did they go nova? Uh, did the sun just freeze up like a, a nova bomb in Andromeda? Uh, you know, the, the, the nova bombs on Andromeda Ascendant. You know, are there still stars in the Milky Way galaxy? We might be able to see those from, you know, the Forge, uh, 1,700 mile, uh, light years away, because ideally this is 200 plus years from when we left the Milky Way. So uh, hopefully our technology has gotten at least a little better in that 200 years, even though, you know, we are where we are. So, good. Exodus. All right. When the Exodus fleet set off on its ponderous journey to a new home outside our galaxy. They marked the forge as their destination. Countless ships lived out their lives aboard these titanic ships during the millennia-long passage. So either it happened really quickly or really long. So a ragtag fleet of ships propelled at tremendous speeds by FTL carried our ancestors to the forge. So this is a setting um, also a technology level, right? Uh, did we have, you know, our Battlestar Galactica where we've got, you know, generational ships or like Titan uh, AE, the, the movie way back in the day? Uh, or, um, I forget the name of the movie with Chris Pratt. Um, or, you know, we have our Stargates. The alien gates provided instantaneous one-way passage to the Forge. I actually am going to veto this. I'm going to say we have mysterious alien gates that were found. I've always been a fan of that kind of uh, genre where the mystery is, where did the gate come from? 
you know, we activated it accidentally. Maybe we activated it accidentally and it sent us someplace or uh, we tested and it was able to, you know, move us back and forth. I always loved the Stargate thing. I just wish, you know, it was like Stargate Atlantis later on instead of like SG-1. So we have uh, Alien Gates. I'm not going to say one way. I'm going to say passage. Because what I'd like to do is to have some sort of narrative that we were able to successfully send things there and figure that out. And uh, the idea is we were trying to figure out what to do with the forge. And then this thing happened. And then we ended up having to use this as the escape mechanism to get us out of here. Um, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, attempt no landing on Europa. Well, okay, so the monolith or the, 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 the obelisk on Europa for 2001 Maybe that's a maybe that's a the control panel or something like that for the obelisk in space or something like that. So, so I'm 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 all in on that. I, I like the idea of the mysterious alien gates. We found them. You know, we still don't know a lot in 2024, 2023 about what's going on outside the outer planets. We haven't even you know found the Oort cloud yet, which is theorized as uh, being something that exists still. So. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Alien Gate theory of how we got to the Forge. All right, communities. So a uh, few survived the journey. Uh, it's perilous. We're scattered to the winds in this perilous place. Dangers abound. There's safety in numbers. Many ships and settlements are united under the banner of one of the founder clans. Interesting organization types there. Uh, we've made our mark in this galaxy. Energy storms we call bale fires threaten to undo that progress, leaving our communities isolated. Interesting. All right, so I will... Give give this up. All right, twenty one. All right, so a few have survived the journey to the forge, which would kind of would kind of work with the alien gate thing. Um, you know, maybe a few survived the journey to the forge, and we can investigate some of that later on. Either maybe there was some kind of thing where. Um, you know, maybe maybe the, the, the way they transported caused issues or maybe it was violent and we had ships that didn't make it uh, or we just didn't have a lot of ships, right? So there's, you know, maybe maybe it's that terracide thing where there's 100,000 people left and it's like we have to make a home here and, and, and work through our, our issues because there's no going home uh, or uh, to go back would be inviting so much problems or... Um, you know, that kind of thing. So we're going to work through that. We're going we're gonna to walk through that. So I'm okay with that one. I'm okay with that one. Okay, iron. I don't have any, I don't, I don't have any, um, I don't have any bag here on this one. I, I understand the idea of the iron valves is to give you the motivation to go do something. Uh, this requires some kind of ethos or some kind of unwritten rule, kind of like a, um, um, you know, like a, a blood oath or something that people used to have back in old timey days. Um, I'm not exactly sure, you know, this will probably give me an idea on why we revered the ships or the iron in this case that does it. Maybe there's no iron. Maybe this is like iron is the new gold or iron is the new diamonds. Maybe there's a lack of iron in this, uh, in this galaxy uh, and, or in, yeah, in this galaxy. And we, you know, use different materials to build things with. So, um, you know, the, there's almost a religion around the iron ships in this case. So, you know, having a talisman or a piece of iron, you know, like my ancestors came over on the Mayflower and I have a piece of the original wood from the Mayflower. Might be some kind of thing like that where it's like my family came from the original iron ships. Well, everybody's family came from the original iron ships, but, you know, maybe there's a maybe there's a different different kind of thought there. So I don't have any real skin in the game on this one. We're going to work that out and make it happen. So. Okay, 42. So, iron vows are sworn upon totems crafted from the enigmatic metal we call black iron. Oh, so black iron was first forged by a long dead civilization. Okay, so this is, all right, already saying that we found some weird shit in this galaxy, probably somewhere around Terminus, or maybe it's tied to the gate that entered, you know, we entered uh, this area in Terminus. Um, so there is, some say it's a living metal, so maybe like nanites or some kind of, you know, metallic, you know, I'm imagining like uh, the, the, the nanites from Iron Man's, you know, um, armor, 
uh, from Iron Man 2, I think. So might be might be something like that where it's like, you know, forged and once it's been forged, that's it. Um, so there might be a, a ton of things there. Um, there's, it abounds. So, all right, uh, all right, let's, all right. So, and of course this brings up the question, what happened to the civilization that made the black iron? And why are we swearing vows on totems created from this stuff? Is it because we revere them? You know, there's a lot of dynamic here that we can get from this. Is it a control thing? You know, is it a, um, you know, what can you do with it? Could you make a ship of black iron? What happens if you found a ship of black iron? A, a, if it's a living metal or a nanite, a ship that has black iron armor, what does that do? Is it could it tip the balance in the in the world? Um, you know, what 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 does having the iron? You know, do you have to give the totem back when you're done? I mean, there's a whole. Could there be a ceremony? Could it be, you know, a ton of different things that could go on here? I'm, I'm, I'm really actually kind of intrigued on, on the, uh, the number we, we, we spun up there. So lots of, lots of places you could go with that, with this world and with this, this system. So, all right, we have laws because laws are necessary. So we're either going to be very much a Western with, you know, maybe a sheriff like a gun smoke or, a, you know, a, 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 you know, any, any, any Western you might see in the 1950s or 60s, rawhide and those kinds of things, all the way up to you've got, you know, covenants and you've got major organizations doing that, kind of like the Federation. Uh, or, you know, it could be like Mad Max where you've got local warlords and local leaders and they take care of their own shite and they have, you know, you know mutual, mutual, you know, defense packs and things like that. So um, I'm, I'm really okay with any of those. Um, maybe, maybe it's a blend of bit. Maybe you've got the, the Federation over here, kind of like in the Alpha and the Beta quadrants, and then, you know, the Gamma quadrants, eh, maybe not so much Federation, uh, you know, and so you, we might end up having some kind of nice uh, thing like that. We have a, I see a 73. So a 73, wow. Communities are bound under the terms of the covenant, a charter established after the Exodus. The organization called the Keepers is sworn to uphold these laws. Okay, so we have a marshal, U.S. Marshals kind of thing. Uh, the covenant, um, most settlements are still governed under the covenant and yield to the authority of the Keepers, but a few of the covenant, but few view the covenant as dogmatic and practical and unjust relic are past. Those places, the keepers find no welcome. Ooh, so could we turn this into like uh, the the Empire, Star Wars, Imperial stormtroopers, or you know, um, out on the rim, or the the area where we're, you know, there's there's less influence, uh, where you're, you know, maybe maybe uh, maybe the Covenant's not around, or maybe they're not liked because they uh, they they treat people differently. Uh, so you'll have outlaws, you'll have pirates, you'll have, uh, you know. People trying to homestead out in, you know, with, with no control or no presence out there. So I, I like that one. I like that one. Communities are bound under the terms of the covenant. All right. So that's great. What did that, you know, what, what, what precipitated the covenant? I, I can see where we might go backwards in time and do some prequels where, you know, what established the covenant? What caused the covenant to need to happen? Do we have, you know, um, so there's a game called Full Thrust, which is a starship game where of battle. You had different factions and stuff. So it's like maybe all these factions came in through the Exodus and then you know we had to hammer out an agreement to not do certain things. But not everybody was on board with that. So that, that's pretty cool too. Religion. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we'll have to see what's up with this one. Uh, it definitely adds conflict, which I think is ultimately what they're trying to do obviously it makes sense here you're going to have potential you know transhumanist deities like we've seen in in other sci-fi rpgs like uh, mind jammer and, and and those and you know different gods you might have ai gods and stuff like that so we're going to go ahead and give this a shot um i mean 34 to 67 nothing much changes right so we'll we'll give it a shot um Oh, the zero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For me, zero, zero, 003 works out just fine because that means our gods have failed us and we've left them behind. 
Exodus was a tipping point. The gods offered no help to the billions who died in the cataclysm and spirit spirituality has little meaning in the forge. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't have religion, um, but uh, you know some people may still be superstitious. They may still hold to some relief, you know, beliefs. Could still have Christmas, that kind of thing. So I mean, we still have certain holidays. It's just like it's secular now instead of uh, religious. So that that works for me. Um, I mean, that does doesn't mean there isn't religion. It's just you know, instead of maybe an organized religion, it's going to be weird cults or something like that, where you know, kind of what we have now, but nothing overly organized. Or you know, maybe there is a religion on certain planets, depending on what we might reach or hit uh, in that respect. So that one's fine. All right, number seven, magic. Okay, I'm gonna fiat this one. No magic. Uh, I don't want magic. I don't want. Jedi Knights. Sorry, I know if that's a turnoff for you, I apologize. You know, I just don't want magic. So um, if I wanted magic, I'll play 5e, you know, or um, there's actually, I think Waystar is a 5e that has magic. Um, the one thing that got me, I, I want to say in the new, the new Mind Jammer version, it was like, oh, now there's psychics and shit. And I'm like, oh, God, really? Not everything needs to have Force Ninjas and Jedis and stuff, because I tried playing an RPG with Star Wars one time with a with a group, and nobody wanted to be anything other than a Jedi. And I was like, okay, nobody wants to be Han Solo, because, you know, you can't, you know, crush somebody's windpipe if, if you really wanted to, uh, or move shit around. So... Um, everybody wants to play Jedi, and I don't want that to devolve into what I'm playing here. So, no magic. Um, consider it a 30, and magic does not exist. Um, it's not to say that you can't mimic that. I'm, I'm, I'm entirely cool with, like, the techno mages, kind of like how, you know, with the uh, special effects or um, street magic, you know, sleight of hand, that kind of stuff. I have no problem with that. Or, like, Galen on Babylon 5, who could make things happen. Uh, with that, um, you know, nanites, you know, I, I'm more than willing to believe that you could affect somebody with, you know, some kind of, you know, uh, ultrasound beacon or, you know, some kind of vibration, you know, uh, disrupt their brain waves or something like that. But yeah, no magic. I don't want people casting fireballs and shit in, in space. So plus I'm thinking that would eat up all your uh, air in your ship. So probably not a good idea. Maybe once I've had a chance to go through this and have sci-fi, we can have it be more science fantasy, kind of like, uh, I don't know. Thundar, the Barbarian, probably would be about right if you rolled a 68 to 100. So that would be you know, your Thundercats, your Thundar, the Barbarian, your She-Ra, your He-Mans, the technology and the magic together, um, which I actually liked both the new Shira and the old Shira and the new He-Man and the old He-Man uh, was very much a fan of that. The Voltron stuff, I guess, is somewhat magic-y. Somewhat magic. It actually is magic-y. I mean, there's dark magic, dark energies, harnessing dark energies. So I'm okay with techno magic kind of stuff. Uh, just I don't want to play that right now. Um, and there's actually, I believe, Will Wheaton did something similar with a techno mage kind of stuff uh, in, in a series that he produced for Geek and Sundry a few years back. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening in, you know, no, uh, November fourth, twenty twenty three, uh, to Critical Role season one. Uh, and uh, there's a couple of uh, little vignettes that he did talking about the the grave grave site gravestone something like that. Um, I'll find it. I'll put something up in our overlay here if I can. Data and communication. I actually like this one because this is um, kind of a tech technical level. Um, our, do we have subspace communications like Star Trek, you know, where it's like going to be near instantaneous communication with Starfleet no matter where you are in the world, in the, in the, in the universe. Uh, well, in the, in, in the, in the galactic quadrants, the alpha and the beta and the gamma and the delta, uh, the, the gamma quadrants. Um, or is it going to be like, you know, courier ships, kind of like uh, Pony Express. I think the the one sh uh, the one uh, solo play that I saw uh, online doing Iron Sworn had mentioned like a Pony Express kind of thing where you've got courier ships, or um, maybe we can create wormholes that can send you know communication through from one place to another. So 
I'm uh, I'm I'm interested in how this is gonna go. Um, I could also see, you know, maybe you can't trust communications, uh, you know, so you would use special courier ships or you would, you know, contract with somebody like my character to, you know, move stuff to and fro. So. <laughs> Oh, man, the magic of the low dice. I have 004. Much was lost when we came to the forge. It's a dark age. Oh, my goodness. The knowledge that remains is a commodity as valuable as the rarest resource. Information is collected, hoarded, and guarded. Ships and outposts endure prolonged periods of isolation, and rumors or disinformation are used to gain an advantage and under undermine foes. Damn. That's not what I was looking for, but... I still think that there's, you know, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, I, so it, it does, you know, I'm imagining, you know, bringing information or, you know, you're going to some, some of the, you know, maybe Terminus, maybe Terminus in this case has like, you know, it's technological. Maybe it's, yeah, um, <clears throat> maybe Maybe the maybe it's like you know short not shortwave radio but like you know radio and TV but over the internet so it's going to be speed of light but you know as you get further and further out into you know into the into the the void and into the frontier areas the information may move a little slower so you know maybe they're behind about you know a year or two on fashions or uh, news that's happened or. You know, uh, almost kind of like uh, would like be like the 1800s. Maybe you have the frontier, which would have been like Missouri, early Missouri. Uh, you know, you wouldn't find out until a week later that you know the the, the war is over or something like that. So, um, I'm definitely seeing that kind of thing where you know you might also you might also have a couple colonies in the outer skirts where it's like, hey, the big ship's coming this week, you know, and it's going to bring in you know your food and your eggs and emails and you know movies we might be we might be like the blockbuster video of of the frontier and bringing you know entertainment and we might bring celebrities or people you know doing concerts or something out there or you know the new hollow vids or what have you so that uh, that that does bring up uh, you know opportunities for doing things as well it is a dark age now that doesn't mean that you know as we get down into these questions, some of the precursor technologies being analyzed, and we can probably figure out at some point how to create, you know, virtual black holes or white holes that would be able to instantaneously send communication. Um, you saw some of that in the original Star Trek as well. It was like, you know, oh, we can't get a hold of Starfleet. We're too far out. I'm just going to shoot from the hip and figure out what I'm going to do. So, you know, if my character is involved with an organization like a law enforcement or the Covenant or whoever, you know, the law enforcement for those folks, and I'm out here all by myself, I may have to make decisions without calling back to headquarters and saying, what do I do, boss? You know, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, maybe the Covenant in this area is kind of, you know, maybe maybe they play a bit fast and loose in the frontier areas versus closer to Terminus where they might be a bit more by the book or, you know, be able to call into the nearest outpost. You know, the nearest, you know, Covenant outpost on the frontier may be three jumps away. So it might take a little time to get information or to, to get that, you know, Form 2573 requisition in for a brand new blazer pistol. So, you know, they're... The covenant may not be as squeaky clean in this side that maybe, um, you know, because of lack of communication. I mean, the, it, it abounds. You know, it, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So, um, excellent. Well, I'm rolling low, and I'm not sure that's a good thing right now. So we'll see. All right, number nine. Number nine, medicine. Okay, so hopefully, so different tech levels are going. to, You know, we may have super super powerful medicine, but we can't send an email across the empire or whatever. So, um, you know, we may be able to clone bodies, but, you know, may not be able to, you know, do that. All right, so let's let's roll for this one. Let me see. What are our three options? Our advanced medical technologies and expertise was lost during the exodus. Okay, so we're low tech. That one, that one's the low tech along with low, low communication. To offset a scarcity of medical supplies and knowledge, resourceful technicians we call riggers create basic organ and limb replacements. Okay, so we've got like uh, tinkers or artificers in, in 5e or, you know, prosthetics that are created, um, which means there's some sort of level of sophistication, whether it be uh, brain interface to, you know, arms or legs, um, exoskeletons that are used to help make people walk or to, um, you know, enhance strength or um, 
create new organs that are me metallic in nature, kind of an organ transplant. Or, you know, we have orders of sworn healers to preserve medical knowledge and train new generation of caregivers. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. All righty. Um, all right, let's go. 75. Crap. Orders of sworn healers preserve our medical knowledge and train new generations of caregivers. Okay, so what does that mean? Orders of sworn healers. So we have like, like the Red Cross or some kind of Doctors Without Borders, uh, medical corps. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be low tech, right? I mean, these, you know, it, it could almost be like healers were in such short supply when we came to the forge that the technology to heal people had to be preserved. You know, um, instead of, you know, what's the Forge's version of Clara Barton or Florence Nightingale? That kind of thing. Uh, so life-saving advanced care is available within larger communities throughout the settled sectors of the Forge. Even remote communities are often served by a novice healer or can request help from a healer's guild. Okay, so we have guilds. Um, we have guilds, which means they're probably in some sort of union, maybe. They're, it's an organization where they'd have to pay dues. Um, it doesn't mean we don't have advanced care. So the, the type of medical technology we might have could be anywhere from, uh, you know, what we have now in, in, you know, normal care where we can almost save anybody, uh, up to, you know, maybe, maybe even, okay, we can't save this body. So we're going to upload your consciousness into some sort of matrix that can be held until we can clone your new body or something like that. Um, so yeah, that, I don't, I don't hate that. Um, I guess that's fine. Like, like I said, you know, we um, might cause some problems if, you know, because we can't send, you know, a message to somebody across the galaxy to go, hey, we need this kind of healer or we need this kind of person. Uh, so, you know, I might need to take a world-renowned doctor to a frontier hospital because they need to do some kind of miracle operation on somebody uh, or... Um, somebody creating uh, prosthetic, you know, or um, maybe a new type of illness on a planet and requires the virologist to go there and there's a, you know, pirates steal the medication, you know, and so we have to get that back because by the time we call back and tell them, you know, by the time we get somebody who can send a ship back to the medical headquarters to get a new batch of serum or something like that, so... Because you can't send an email, you know, very fast. So, um, good, good stuff. I can definitely see some, some, some uh, work here. So, uh, and the fact that they're in guilds, you know, they they have some kind of, maybe they have control. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, some guild members uh, don't adhere to the Hippocratic oath. Maybe you've got guild members that are going rogue and doing some kind of, you know, weird experimentations to kind of, you know, exceed current lifespans or something like that. So we've got all kinds of options that can come here. So, all right, next. Artificial intelligence. Okay, so this one's interesting. Um, the, the, the gist of Starforged is you and your ship, you and your small crew, we, we happy few, in our ship, very Firefly-like, right? It's just you and a handful of folks. So um, I had always envisioned myself and maybe a crew member. And then um, I was a fan of the AI concept um, on Andromeda Ascendant. I don't like Kevin Sorbo. You can um, go, go, you know, jettison himself into the sun. But, you know, having Rami, uh, the, the, the holographic AI, and then maybe a body AI, kind of like, uh, like what the, the, the actor was, uh, or, you know, you have somebody like a C-3PO. Uh, this one's interesting. So they, they go from, we no longer have access to advanced computer systems. We rely on Sears called Adepts. Uh, our computers are limited to simple digital systems, most basic computer machine intelligence. This is because, blah, the energies in the forge corrupt systems. AI was outlawed in the aftermath of the machine wars, which is a whole thing by itself. Oh, my God. And then we've lost the knowledge to create and maintain AIs. Oh, man. So in 200 years, we haven't figured out how to create another AI. Um, 
some of these things are, I, I would call, you know, it seems like, well, we might have the ability to heal people, but we don't have the ability to tell people, hey, you know, turn on my lights, computer. Vestiges of advanced machine intelligence are coveted and wielded by those in power. Yeah, I could see like a technology guild, like a techno guild or something that would uh, gatekeep that, um, whether they assume that it is you know, only for the wealthy or for the cat, uh, like a caste system. Uh, they see much of our AI was lost in the exodus. What remains is under the control of powerful organizations and people. Power, well, that's kind of like what we've got now, isn't it? Uh, and is on, often wielded as a weapon or deterrent. Oh, well, the yeah. rest of us must make do with primitive systems. Okay, well, what is primitive in, like, 22-something, right? Um, we may have really fast computers. Uh, uh, we just won't have them talking to us. We'll still be using keyboards and mice and stuff, maybe. Or, you know, maybe we'll have a you know nice visor or heads-up display. Artificial consciousness emerged in the time before the exodus and sentient machines live with us here in the forge. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so that would be 68 through 100 is kind of like how I envision Andromeda Ascendant or um, C-3PO, human-cyborg relations, that kind of thing. So they, they talk back. They might have a bit of an opinion. Uh, they can do complex things and manage systems. So, all right, let's give it a shot. I'm looking... I'm looking for, I, I would really like 34 through 60, uh, 34 through 100. Anything above 34, I think, would be okay. Um, the, the, the adepts remind me a lot of Dune, obviously. Um, yeah. Oh. Oh, my God. God, we've done, uh, we've had a four and a three, I think, and a 100. I don't think I've ever rolled a 100 on a, on a, a 2D10 uh, like this. So, wow. Okay. Wow. All right. So, well, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? I mean, artificial AI is very advanced, but they can't send an email to headquarters a thousand light years away or something like that. Um, okay. Okay. You know what? I'm I'm good with that. I can definitely see that. Um, I actually wondered about that because it would cut down on the amount of I say paperwork that we have for people or things. So um, yeah, um, you know, we could also argue that maybe the uh, maybe the AI, uh, you know, there could always be something you know secret there. It's like what caused the the sun burnout. So that's an interesting question. So they say they're sentient, which means uh, have they been given that by law? Uh, is that something that uh, they had to fight for? Is it something that not everybody agrees with? Um, I'm thinking a measure of a man from uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you watched Picard, uh, apparently the Federation didn't learn their damn lesson anyway. So I'm definitely seeing, I'm definitely thinking things like that where it's like, Maybe maybe there's maybe there's some people that don't like AI, or maybe they, uh, you know, maybe there's some uh, racism or uh, not racism, but well, I mean, if they're sentient, maybe they have a whole planet with nothing but mechanoids on it, or cyborgs, or um, are they treated like people? Do they have personhood? So that is interesting, um, very very interesting. Do they have a god? Because I'm uh, I have this site that I have called Orion's Arm that is actually Orion's arm and it's a it's a, a universe thing and so there's different kinds of gods AI gods so like this is a god like the uh, you know a huge like a, an AI for AIs or something like that that uh, and it's all super futuristic stuff so very interesting how this is this is heading here so i like i like the I, well i don't know what that is but and i rolled a 100 so wow that's 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 emphatic there that's not like hey you know it's on the it almost feels like i need to go like how much you know 68 like okay we just barely have artificial consciousness and whatever you know it's like what degrees of that is it like is it barely ai at 68 like you you roll the 68 or 69 or you have a 67 and it's like okay we almost have ai and then we find something no this is 100 this is like you've got ais that have ais that monitor ais 
Um, you know, you have planets that have AIs, but you know, they, they don't lack, they don't lack faster than light message traffic. So um, the AIs are, you know, pretty much managers of themselves. They manage planets. Uh, they'll, you know, help terraform stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm seeing that. Ugh, 11. Okay. The wars. <sighs> so we've, we've already seen hints that they wanted them, that there was a machine war. Maybe the machine war was the AI war uh, or wars against AI. So everybody's like being Terminators or something. Um, all right. So uh, 1 to 33. Uh, here in the forge, resources are too precious to support organized fighting forces or advanced weaponry. Okay, maybe. Some of these kind of don't make sense now, considering some of the other questions. It's like, you know, we have AIs, but, you know, resources are too precious. How can we have, like, you know, major healers and things like that and AI and we don't have resources, right? Some of this stuff seems to feel like, okay, maybe 33 is off the plate, you know, maybe, maybe the, the resources are too precious, um, you know, or, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's only one option here that works, like war never ends. Ugh, that's gross. Um, so we'll see what happens. Okay. We have a 22. Damn. Here in the fours, resources are too precious to support. Organized fighting forces or advanced weaponry. Now, why would that be? Maybe the covenant doesn't allow for advanced weaponry. Maybe that's, you know, maybe we saw what happened on Earth in the mid 20th century and early 21st century. And perhaps the reason we're in the forge is because the sun, you know, obviously the sun plague, but. Maybe we got to the forge and said, hey, we should try a different way. And advanced weaponry may be illegal or illicit. Um, it says weapons are simple and cheap. Starships are often cobbled together from salvage. Most communities rely on ragtag bands of poorly equipped conscripts or volunteers to defend their holdings. And raiders prowl the forge in search of easy prey. See, I, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm feeling like some of this might be, you know, back to, again to on the frontier kind of thing. Or, you know, I find it hard that we've got advanced AI and we have, you know, starships cobbled together or something like that. It would feel to me like the AIs are going to be, you know, fixing the ships or improving the design or, um, you know, helping us find better ways to build ships. So um, I, I'm definitely feeling the have and have not kind of feel on this one where it's like, you know, um, resource, maybe, maybe instead of, you know, Resources are too precious in certain places to support organized fighting forces. And the covenant is what was created to, you know, help with that or something. Uh, I have to I have to work on that one a little bit. And what so maybe 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 by the time we left to come to the forge, our technology was based on something that is scarce in the forge. So we can't maybe we can't create certain types of new technology maybe like you know pulse riot you know plasma rifles or directed energy weapons or something like that maybe we can't do that we can still do things like make electricity and create you know a positronic brain um and maybe we can create you know warp drive obviously um you know uh, to to be able to do ftl but Maybe the weaponry that we build is a little different, so um, we'll have to figure out what armament looks like on a ship. It can't have, you know, maybe you're throwing, I don't know, maybe we're throwing railgun, you know, bullets or something, metal bullets or tossing rocks or we're using artillery from, you know, by throwing asteroids at, you know, on, onto, onto planets. So uh, we'll, we'll work with that one. Um, and of course, it also sports uh, organized fighting forces. Um, you know, the covenant. I mean, we have a law enforcement with with the covenant. We have a, a, a martial kind of thing. So maybe that goes back to the organized thing. Maybe we can't organize because of communication. Maybe we can't organize because, um, yeah, maybe the technology is not there. Maybe we're missing. Maybe copper is something that's in short supply, and that was you know what all of our weapons were based on. So they're they're at a they're at a minimum. So until we figure out that maybe 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 the weapons are simple and cheap. Maybe everybody does walk around with a sword like uh, the person on the on the um, 
on the front cover does, uh, in addition to what appears to be some kind of long rifle, but it's, you know, maybe, maybe she spent five years worth of pay to get that, that long rifle, uh, EM long rifle. Um, and you know, there was examples earlier in here where it's like some of the energies in the forge are such that, you know, maybe some weapons cannot be used. Right, and that would lend itself to how does that work? How does that happen? How did the forge get created? Uh, maybe there's some reason that we got sent here for that. So, um, any any number of things uh, as we as we get through here. Okay, all right. So we're on number twelve now. I think we're getting all right. So we're on life forms now. Uh, there's a number of different options that we have here. Uh, this is a perilous and often inhospitable galaxy, but life finds a way. Okay. Uh, life in the forge is diverse. Yeah. So this is, this is, uh, this feels like the Star Trek one, like uh, monster or alien of the week. They just all kind of look human with a different forehead, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, many sites and planets are infested by forge spawn. Um, that, that feels very alien-like or predator, like, you know, they're, they're evil and they threaten to overrun other life. They might be like, um, the Zerg, right? Zerg on Star, on Starcraft. Uh, life in the Forge was seeded and engineered by the Essentia, ancient entities who enact their inscrutable will in this galaxy. I think at some point we'd start talking about precursors, so I don't know who the Essentia is, but maybe they're the precursors that we are um, going to be talking about in, in future questions. Oh, see, there you go. The precursors, number 13, which is coming up. So if we get this one, maybe that makes the precursors one a lot easier, but I got to roll high. So, but I've been rolling fairly decently uh, in that respect. So um, I, I think, yeah, um, uh, I, <laughs> I definitely see the Zerg uh, from 34 to 67 if we get that. So that will be interesting. Um, a faction is said to be experimenting with forged spawn DNA to create a new biological super weapon. See, it's like, wait, yeah, Waylon Yutani, you know what I mean? So, 39. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so forged spawn is a thing. All right, so we have aberrant creatures. That doesn't necessarily mean we don't have, you know, we can't also have you know, life seeding and engineering by the Essentia, what caused the forge spawn, right? Um, you know, so maybe the, maybe, maybe some of the life that was seeded by the Essentia didn't end up as well as they thought. Maybe the precursors weren't as smart as they thought they were. Um, or, you know, maybe, maybe they were on SETI Alpha 5 instead of SETI Alpha 6. Uh, and that, that caused them to, you know, genetically mutate over the millions of years that got, uh, a Star Trek Next Generation actually did something similar to the precursors or life was seeded by somebody who looked an awful lot like Odo and the Changelings, uh, ironically enough. Uh, and I bel it, it looks like one of the actors who did one of the Changelings on Next Generation was also a Changeling on, um, was the, the alien creator on uh, Next Generation. So um, it's not to say that, you know, Seeding and engineering by the Ascension didn't also cause the forge spawn. So maybe maybe one of the things will be we have to figure out how to get rid of all the forge spawn. Um, that's also ethical. It's like, are we committing genocide against the sentient race? What if they're like uh, uh, the vampires on uh, the Omega Man or, uh, you know, the, the remake with Will Smith uh, with the vampires? He finds out he's actually the bad guy and he kills himself. Um, uh, forge spawn or a thing? Um, maybe forge spawn. How do forge spawn get around though? Do, can they fly around in space? Are they immune? Do they have to breathe air? Are they like, oh, what does a forge spawn look like? A, I, I, was, I was reading something about tardigrades today, the water bears. I'm thinking, what if, what if, what if forge spawn? What if forge spawn are tardigrades? What if they look like this? What if what if what if four spawn are gigantic, ugly tardigrades? That that is cool. Because they look like they got little claws and they got eight legs and they're nigh impossible to kill. I mean that that's a that is a recipe for nightmares right there. I mean, look at that thing. I mean ugh. I mean, what do they do with that? I don't know what they do with that mouth thing, you know? Um, oh, sorry. 
Yeah, those things would give me nightmares if I saw one of those coming down this. You know, what if, you know, what if it, what if it doesn't have, you know, six legs? What if it, yeah, man, what if they're smart? What if they're human smart and they have their own technology and they're like, not like the Borg, but they rapidly breed like the Zerg and they're smart or they're carried around like rats. You know, they're, they're, you know, they, they adhere themselves to the, the tops or bottoms of ships and get carried to other planets where they just decimate populations. That's good. That's good. That's really good. I like that. I mean, look at that thing. It looks like it's got some, you know, got some gnarly, you know, got some eyebrows. It, it doesn't see. It probably, maybe it, maybe it has tremor sense. So it, it feels the vibrations in the air or on, on terrain. Maybe it feels the vibrations. Um, and then it sucks your brain out with that sucker thing right there. Kind of like a, an illithid or something like that. I mean, look at the claws on that thing, man. Ooh. Yeah, I can imagine, like, you know, things. Yeah, I like that. All right, so, all right, let's, let's add that. Forged spawn look like tardigrades. So they have at least six legs, right? I, I don't subscribe to the Guardian. I just, like I said, I Googled it. But, um, yeah, stunted microscopic caterpillars. Eh, okay. You know, maybe they maybe they walk around like a centaur or something. They use their back two legs to walk, and then they have like, you know, they got a little, you know, they, they got claws, but, you know, they could be appendages or they could, you know, grip stuff. Maybe they are smart, right? Nice. Nice. I'm, I'm digging that. Uh, centaur-like. Centaur-like. And the ext extreme conditions, they can live in the in the vacuum of space, so they don't breathe. Uh, maybe they maybe they make their own oxygen, or maybe they make their own nutrients to sustain themselves. And they live off of organic matter or something like that. They have to consume organic matter. You know, humans, carbon-based life form. Maybe the carbon that that they pick up, or the the minerals they pick up from their prey sustain them in that respect not eating mind but like let, you know maybe the salt vampires like on star trek they suck out the salt and they the you know it creates the the chemicals needed to to make, help them survive i really want to work on that one so you know what what does their hierarchy look like are they are like a hive mind not orson scott card it's the the you know where they're yeah what if they're what if they're a bug, kind of thing? And eh, that's probably too that's probably too stereotypical. I got I got to work on that one a little more. Um, I've got ideas though. Centaur like, what makes them a super weapon? Because you know um, they mentioned, you know the possibility of them being a like a super weapon kind of thing. Uh, you know faction is said to be experimenting with forge spawn DNA. How do they capture the forge spawn? So um, that's just a quest starter. But I mean. You know, what if what if somebody did create a biological super weapon with them, you know? Um, so that's that's really good. Okay. Um, all right, so precursors. Uh, over the eons, a vast number of civilizations rose and fell within the forge. Okay, so millions and millions of years. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the dwarf, you know, galaxy that is nearly the same distance away as the forge in our world here, um, it's like 10 billion years old, according to, you know, the... Um, readings and stars there's no more star creation going on so it's a st somewhat stable galaxy civilizations rise and fall you know planets blow themselves up in global thermonuclear war so that that makes sense scavenger crews and audacious explorers delve into mysterious monuments and ruins of these ancient beings okay the ascendancy an advanced spacefaring empire once ruled the entirety of the forge vaults of inscrutable purpose all that remain to mark the ascendancy's legacy, but those pieces are untethered from our own reality. Oh my, that's interesting. Okay, and then biomechanical life forms called the remnant, engineered by civilizations as weapons in cataclysmic war, survive the death of their creators. Okay, so we've got evil AI in, in addition to our AI. Oh, that's not good. Um, you'd have your your data, and you'd have your Borg. 
I do like the idea of the precursors. Um, I think they call them precursors on start controller too. Uh, start controller one and two and, and the third actually. Uh, Urquan Masters is what you uh, can download the, the free version of that game. Fun game if you ever try it. I, I can play that game forever. I've played it multiple times. Um, interesting. So the Ascendancy, they talked about the Ascendancy, the Remnant, uh, precursors they had what was that above what they have that called above the essentia so we're going to have some kind of ancient uh, super power that fizzled out or went away or you know evolved to a higher life form uh, and went went somewhere and left their shit behind that we're gonna find when we get into the forge um, the thing that brought us here is also a remnant of the ascendancy. So what happened? Why did they leave their stuff 1,700 light years in a different, you know, galaxy? Did they know this was coming? Uh, did they, you know, there's a lot there. Anyway, I haven't, haven't, haven't even ruled yet. Let me go, let me go see, but I'm already, I'm already fiending for this. So. 40. Okay, so we got the ascendancy. Um, the ascendancy and an advanced spacefaring race once ruled the entirety of the forge. Vaults of inscrutable purpose were all that remained to mark the Ascendancy's legacy, but those places are untethered from our own reality. Ugh. Vaults can appear spontaneously, washed up like flotsam. Their gravity and atmospheres pay no heed to natural laws. Some are corrupted and ruined. Others are unmarred and intact. Some are both at once. Okay, so that, that speaks of like super tech, right? Uh, being able to manipulate space and time. Uh, I'm wondering how our Eidolon drives, which are supposed to be faster than light, are supposed to allow us to, you know, break the space-time barrier to exceed, you know, cosmic constraints, would interact with these things. Maybe they would show up as like a, you know, spatial, the good old-fashioned Star Trek spatial anomaly kind of thing. Um, interesting. Okay. Okay, I can. Uh, we can work with this. We can work with this. Maybe there's a guild of. Maybe I'm a member of a guild of explorers, that is hunting some of these vaults. Who knows? Um, the ascendancy. <clears throat> I may change the name, but I think that's what I'm going to keep. There has to be something like that. Yeah, I like that. Advanced. It says an advanced spacefaring race. So. Maybe they didn't go anywhere. Maybe they just zapped to a different space and time. Or maybe the advanced spacefaring race is what caused the initial exodus in the first place by blowing up the Milky Way galaxy. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe them bringing us to the forge is their way of trying to save as many people as they can. Uh, what if other parts of the Milky Way galaxy are also being brought to the forge as well? So... Just a thought. Maybe this is like the Noah's Ark uh, for the, the Milky Way galaxy until the Milky Way galaxy fixes itself or maybe the forge is heading towards another galaxy that can be used. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't say that we can't have remnants. Maybe remnants would be the uh, mechanical beings guarding those vaults or uh, caches of information or technology all right, horrors. Oh, we're, we're we're doing horrors. I thought horrors was the forge spawn that we have. Maybe the forge spawn came from another part of the Milky Way galaxy. Who knows? All right, horrors. Put enough <laughs> put enough alcohol in a spacer, and they'll tell you stories of ghost ships crewed by vengeful and dead. It's nonsense. Uh, most insist that horrors aren't real. Spacers know the truth. Strange energies of the forge give unnatural life to the eye. Uh, I don't want. I don't want sixty-eight to one hundred. I really don't. I don't. We don't want undead. I don't want fucking vampires. I don't want space zombies. I'm sorry. I'm boring. I know. I'm sorry. I don't want space vampires. Okay. I, I just don't. Um, I don't want space liches. I don't want space whites. I. I just don't. Um. I get it. You know. Um, I'm, I'm definitely in on the four spawn and aliens and predators and shit that's coming after humans and we're the, you know, we got to fight back and I'm Danny Glover and, you know, you're one ugly motherfucker, you know, that kind of thing. 
I just, I just don't want 68 to 100, okay? Strange energies, okay? Energies equals magic, and I don't want that. So if it's a 68 to 100, no. Um, actually, I don't I don't have a problem with any of this. Uh, 33 or 67, I think they're probably the same, right? Um, there's not much difference between, you know, putting enough alcohol in a spacer. Spacers know the truth. Um, when you travel the depths of the forge, be wary. Some are cursed by those who did not survive the cataclysm. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to amend 34 through 67. Because we have the ascendant, the ascendancy, or the, the folks who live and futz around with space and time, maybe it's not life and death veils that are a bit hazy. Maybe there's ghost ships, but they're not ghost ships. Oh, anyway, let's, let, me, let me roll first. Let me see what we get. 15. Okay, so we have put enough alcohol in a spacer, and they'll tell you stories of ghost ships created by vengeful undead. They're not vengeful undead. I'm, I, I, there's no undead. But ghost ships, I could definitely see that. Or, um, I mean, there's been enough spatial anomalies and time travel and shit in Star Trek and other places where you could very easily, you know, have a have a ship like the Bozeman from the from the next generation or uh, a wormhole that is really a portal to the future you know it's space and time right we forget that so a wormhole can go from 1967 to 2035 and drop you off in the same place um can you get back who knows you know maybe maybe somebody goes through a new spatial anomaly they found and they end up five years in the future or you know maybe they find a wormhole that takes them back to earth just as the exodus is about to happen um but yeah i i could i could you know uh, maybe being a spacer is not the best thing in the world maybe it's like a you know um I, i'm imagining um uh, i'm imagining being called a spacer uh is very much like a um you know old zeke he's kind of crazy you know he's been out here forever he doesn't see anybody it's been 30 years since you know uh, his ship is just a hot mess. Uh, you know, he's, you know, he's a bit, he's a bit, he's a little bit off. Maybe it's just because he's seen stuff, right? Uh, maybe there's a reputation there of like, oh, a spacer doesn't, you know, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody like that sees a ghost ship uh, or maybe the space time, you know, in and out of phase with, with normal reality is, uh, a ship that didn't make it back, their Ideolon drive failed or some kind of issue and they didn't, um, didn't survive or, you know, no trace of the ship was found, you know, in like in hyperspace or something of Babylon 5. Ship's gone, but maybe once in a while the eddies get close enough with the, you know, the, the, the dimension that you're flying your faster than light drive through at some point and you see an after effect of a ship or something. Um, you know, maybe maybe the anchorages or the uh, the threads for Ideolon space can thin in certain places uh, and, and cause that issue. All right, so we'll we'll use that one. Uh, did I did I put the yeah I put the ascendancy in. All right, horrors. It's good that I didn't I forgot to write all this stuff down that I was contemplating and and, and conjecturing because I've got a video now that I can go back and remember some of this stuff. So what's the quest starter for this one? You receive a distress call from a ship stranded at the event horizon of a black hole. Wow, somebody's watched Andromeda Ascendant because that's, I think, the first two episodes where the Ascendant gets stuck near a black hole and the um, Maru actually uh, um, pulls the ship away from the black hole. The ship itself broke apart, a shattered hull, trailing debris. There's no signs of life, and yet the ghostly messages persist. Well, that could be a space-time phenomena, but... Maybe it's not. You're absolutely right. Um, maybe that was just, you know, maybe maybe realities start converging and cracking and coming in and out there. You know, like sliders, you know, you slide from one reality to another to try to get to get home. So all right. Well that that is it for the the world. And I'm going to stop it now. Well, that was it for the the universe. Um, we'll come back. The next video you'll find uh, we'll be we'll be talking about next steps on on working through these items. So, 
Uh, hope you'll be there to join us. And uh, I'm Brian Brake, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon.